one he was screaming and so were 50,000 others. The crowd noise was certainly an issue. Nine count violation. DC number one. It's a five yard penalty. Remains second down. Now Casey Printers is going to raise and lower his foot to show the center when to snap the ball. The ball doesn't come back. It's like he's stamping his foot as if that's going to make a louder noise. Just the frustration trying to get his center, Dean Valley, to be able to hear. But when he initially raised his foot, the idea is that Valley is looking back through his legs so he can see it. Valley wasn't looking the first time. Looking now. And the ball under thrown again. Looking for Emmanuel Arsenault. It will be third down and another boot away here from the BC Lions. A bewildered Casey Printers this week. Played as good as you can play as a quarterback last week in Hamilton. Paul McCallum has to kick it with his left foot. Montreal will scoop and they will score. And look who has it, Jamel Richardson. his third Patrick this is officially ugly the snap comes back to Paul McCallum it's just a bit off target he has to go up and get it thinks for a moment about running by the time he realizes that he should have kicked it, way too late. You are so right. It has become ugly for the BC Lions. Third touchdown today, Jamel Richardson. Prophetic, he said he was going to have a big game today. He has 45-18 the score. Anthony Calvillo looking poised. Darian Durant getting ready for the West Final. Saskatchewan hosting Calgary still ahead. 3.18 to go third quarter in the Montreal Alouettes. Now thumping the BC Lions 45-18. And they've done it in so many ways. Mostly by Calvillo. Five touchdown passes today. Well, in this din in the dome, let's go down to John Liu. Okay, guys, prior to that last Montreal touchdown, the uh, time count violation was probably the first tangible sign that the noise level was getting to Casey Printers. Our trusty noise level meter had the crowd rated about 105 decibels, which is pretty much as loud as a chainsaw being run beside the BC quarterback. During the first half, they were abruptly about 99 decibels, but they've really upped their game in the second half. And if that's having an impact on BC, then that doesn't bode well. As one defender told me yesterday, he thought that the crowd noise could very well be a significant factor in today's outcome, guys. That's not a chainsaw. That's a steamroller. 45-18. The score. Printers. Neil Wilson. Some good yak yards. Yards after catch. Good signs of life from the BC Lions. They've got a long way to come back. They'll need to string together a series of plays like that. Neil Wilson, former Montreal Alouette. John Lou mentioned the noise. The crowd is pumped up this volume today. Made it hard on the Lions. Pump fake. Printers and almost picked off by free safety. Etienne Boulay. He knows he should have had one too. And that was not a good throw from Casey Printers. Well, Casey Printers expected that his receiver, Ian Smart, was going to come open on that play. They had on a fake hitch screen. Smart is right at the bottom of the screen. He pretends he's going to block. 
and then takes off up field. Mark Estelle is right there to create that collision. Bridgers anticipates where Smart is going to be, but Estelle impeded him. And that is why Etienne Boulay was the only one near that ball. Four receivers to the right. Printers, all kinds of trouble again, throws it away. Casey Printers afforded so much time last week. Running for his life today. Well, this is part of the problem that you run into when you fall behind against a team that can rush the passer like Montreal. They know you're in passing situations. They just pin back their ears. And when you've got the likes of Karan Williams, Eric Wilson, Anwar Stewart and John Bowman doing that, it's going to be a long day as a quarterback. And Eric Wilson just makes it a little bit longer. I think it's probably more frustrating to get trash talked by a guy like Eric Wilson because he's one of the most articulate guys and he in is. the Canadian football And I'm league. sure it was not only comedic, it probably it was very dry. Yes. Yeah, really well thought out well trash thought talk. Out, yeah. Smart trash talker, you might call him. Eric Wilson. Third season in Montreal, spent time in Winnipeg. Was an O-line player at one time. Guy who usually faces a couple of offensive linemen in a game playing that nose. Yeah, and he gets overshadowed by the sack numbers posted by, by Stewart, Bowman, and, and Karan Williams. But Eric Wilson is a huge part of that defensive line, kind of the blue guy. Holds it all together. So McCallum will have to kick it away again, and we're counting bodies here to make sure that nothing goes astray like last time. Spiraling kick back to Taylor inside his 15. There's a penalty marker down. This will likely come back a few yards. The Alouettes leading 45-18 with 1.23 to go in the third. Lowe's captioning of the CFL on TSN is brought to you by Sportcheck. Sportcheck, shop online at sportcheck.ca. Anthony Calvillo. He's been down this road so many times as a Montreal Alouette, so many times. In many ways, the Alouettes have been like the Atlanta Braves in baseball. They get to the World Series or get very deep in the playoffs. Don't win the whole thing very often. That's what's happened here. If there's any criticism about the Alouettes, they've been a powerhouse. Just one great cup win to show for it back in 2002. Don't get me wrong. There are some players that would love any kind of ring. That's... Procedure. Montreal number 57. It's a five-yard penalty. Remains first down. You know, and it's so true and you draw the parallel to the Atlanta Braves that eventually you have a core group of guys and you, you make a run year after year with that core group of guys but eventually that core starts to get a little bit older and your window starts to close that's where there's a bit of pressure on the Alouettes now it's their longest field of the afternoon to try to march Final minute now, third quarter, and Avon Coburn gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a little further, and his shadow, Juwan Armour's right there, as always. Well, Avon Coburn said he's not going to get into the, the verbal jousting with Juwan Armour this week. He's just going to worry about playing football. And really, at this point, the only trash talk Coburn needs is to point up at the scoreboard. Second and 14. Hand off again. Coburn. Darren Tony and Aaron Hunt with the tackle. Four yards shy of a first down. It will be third down. And another rarity today. A Damon Duvall sighting for a punt. 
The only distraction perhaps this week for the Montreal Alouettes, the rumor mill. Mark Tressman, his name surfacing as the Buffalo Bills fired Dick Geron. We had a chance to have a candid conversation with him the other day. He kind of smiled and said it was flattering. Well, it's very typical of Mark Tressman, though, and he says, you know, things like that, people from other organizations become interested in you because your team is successful. It comes from team success. Damon Duvall got knocked down, wants a penalty call, but doesn't get it. And at the other end, Ian Smart runs into a wall named Shea Emery. That's the end of the third quarter. Damon Duvall and the Alouettes 15 minutes away from another trip to another Grey Cup. Welcome back to the Anthony Calvillo Show. Five touchdown tosses today. Our numbers brought to you by Tim Hortons. Always fresh, always. Uh, the, the statistic that jumps off the page at me, rushing yards. When the BC Lions beat the Montreal Alouettes in early September, Martel Mallett had 21 carries for 213 yards. Today, the Lions have nine yards on the ground, and that's a function of falling behind early. And the worst news for the BC Lions, the Alouettes, when they lead after three quarters, when they lead after halftime, are undefeated. And when they have a big lead, they rarely ever give it up. Yeah, good luck to you when you're down by as much as the BC Lions are at this point. The Alouettes aren't going to take the foot off the gas pedal. That's something they've shown throughout this season. Second catch of this game. And G. Roy Simon, who is such a big factor in the last Alouette's Lions matchup, had over 120 yards receiving in that football game. And a guy who's been hot down the stretch, G. Roy Simon has been over 100 in five of his last seven football games. Fantastic finish to the season. Race today. Delayed handoff and a fumble. And Montreal has it again. And it's Eric Wilson on the recovery. Look at Martel Mallet coming off the field. That left arm is just hanging limp at his side. I think he's done for the day. You just look at that reaction. The second fumble of the day by Martel Mallet. He fumbled earlier. And the guy who pulled the ball out this time was Ramon Guzman. Number 52. And on any other team in the Canadian Football League, Ramon Guzman would be playing every down here hey, in Montreal. He I'm not my hand, white. I love you guys. Hey, man, this I'm is what we do, man. I'm a boy. Hey, hey, hey. Well, a Montreal bench. I think already looking ahead to next week, Andrew Hawkins. Chance for him to get some reps here as well. And maybe the only drama left in this ball game is whether Anthony Calvillo will throw his sixth touchdown pass. He's never thrown six in any game, regular season or playoff. And his sixth today would give him a CFL playoff record. We know Mark Tressman doesn't like to get Anthony Calvillo out of games too early. You know, Tressman has said repeatedly one of the toughest things to do in this league is to, to close out games. This, uh, this one's kind of closing out. Avon Coburn, a little shimmy and shake. Close to a first down. Mark Tressman is also a guy who doesn't like to rub it into the opposition. But here's one little thing about Anthony Calvillo is that, again, he looks sharp today. He hasn't played a whole lot in the last month. Yeah, and we asked Calvillo about this on Friday after the Alouettes practice. And his, you know, he was very nonchalant about it at that time, felt very confident and comfortable, and said, at, at this stage of my career, I'm ready. I know what it takes to be sharp. I know what I need to do, and I'm ready to go. And he has proven to be prophetic. Officials. 
He even deked him out. 